I mentioned, this is like another part of my legal practice series. So the legal practice series is something that I started to try and give aspiring solicitors as much information as they need um, as it relates to how the law is actually in practice. So in each episode or in each live, I look at different legal practice areas with associates, with different solicitors, and then we kind of go through as many questions um, and give as many answers as possible as to what your career is like as a lawyer. So thank you, Emily, for joining us. You're very welcome. I'm glad to be here and answer as many questions as possible. Um, I'm always keen to get involved in things like this because when I was starting my legal career, like I didn't know any, I didn't know any other lawyers. Uh, I didn't know anyone to ask questions to. So I think I firmly believe that you should extend the ladder back down. So you know, I'm always welcome. Anybody that's got any questions, you can always drop me a message on LinkedIn. Perfect. Okay, great. So as you know, and for people tuning in today, the um, focus is commercial real estate. I don't know if you want to start by kind of just giving us a brief overview of your legal journey today. And then during the live, we'll go into each of those things in more detail. Yeah, of course. So I uh, graduated from Exeter University in 2017, where I studied law and French law. So it was a French law master sort of on top of the normal LLB. So it's a bit, a bit different. Um, to mm -hmm. a usual law degree. So I spent a year in Rennes in France, um, where I did a master's one qualification in European law. Um, and then I came back, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go straight into LPC or not. And all my friends were doing it, I felt really pressured to make a snap decision. Um, but I'm really glad that I did. And I took out the master's loan, which you could get back then for the LPC. Mm -hmm. um, and I did an LLM in legal practice at, in Birmingham. So I went from Exeter to France, to Birmingham, to Birmingham. Okay. <laughs> and then after, the, after my LPC, I um, got a training contract sort of that summer, and then I had a year to sort of find something to do in the middle, uh, so I was a paralegal, um, and I paralegal for the infected blood inquiry, so it was a completely different experience, I was working for, um, so it was sort of funded by the um, sort of like government type thing, but it was an independent okay. inquiry, so it was sort of off to the side if, if if that makes sense. Um, and it was, yeah, completely different. Um, and then I started my training contract in September 2019. And so I've done the majority, majority of it during the pandemic, which has been, yeah, very tricky. A different experience, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. And then obviously you qualified into commercial real estate. Yeah, yeah, what? really qualified. Okay, when did you qualify? I qualified in September. So I've had three months um, as an NQ. Uh, well, yeah, four months now. Yes. Um, but at the end of my training contract, I did a secondment. So um, I was out of the firm for nine months on secondment and then I joined back in. So um, I'm still, yeah, getting back into the swing of things at my firm, really. I've only been back since December. Wow. Okay, <laughs> we'll go into that in more detail because I think it'd be something good to cover because um, I haven't heard of a nine month secondment on a training contract, but okay, that's fine. <laughs> we'll cover that. <laughs> so if we rewind then and we go back so obviously I know you mentioned that we went to US with Exeter then you self-funded your LPC by combining mm -hmm. with NLM that's something I did as well I feel like the moment that came in it was like everyone was like okay let's just do this let's keep going <laughs> so that was good how did you find the vacation scheme and training contract application because you did get your training contract quite soon after that I did I was extremely lucky but you know I had my fair share of knockbacks throughout I've been like throughout sort of my um university some university I was was um, applying like everybody else like you know some of the people I live with I live with lost all of your law students which I wouldn't recommend um, wow so, you know, <laughs> one, of, one of the boys one of the boys I live with but he got his training contract I think at the end of first year so by second year like he knew he he was I'm sure it was, that that he was, it was really a, he was sent all the people around me you know Exeter is um one of the universities that all of the big firms target so you know I was trying to do my best going to all these presentations listening to all these different law firms thinking you know can I see myself there and then applying as so many applications year on year and just sort of getting a few vacation schemes here and there but you know by no means was I getting an interview for every application I did and I just found it so demoralizing it's so competitive and you know at points I was like why am I doing why am I putting myself through this is, yeah is like what is the it? point and yeah. yeah and I was like what else can I do like maybe I just stay in France maybe I won't bother coming back um but I persevered you know and kept going with it but yeah I think mainly demoralizing and I think it's such a good a massive achievement just to keep going through these things absolutely um, 
Definitely. What kept you going? What is it that you feel like really kept you going when you kept receiving those rejections? And when you were constantly in the presence of people who were yeah. at the same stage as you, but had actually already got their training contract? Like, how did you keep yourself going? I think um, I really wanted to be in goal. I just, I really wanted to be a sister. You know, it's, it really is something that I wanted to do like, since my A-levels. Although, you know, I didn't really know what the career entailed. And when I was doing my A-levels, I genuinely thought I was going to do like criminal law for three years. Like I didn't know that there was any other type. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to learn about murder for three years. It's going to be forever. That's what and you see on got... TV, right? Before <laughs> suits, it was always criminal law. It was like the law and order and all of that type of yeah. stuff. It was criminal law exactly yeah. I thought I was gonna be yeah I thought that's all we had to do and I had no idea there was any other type so um even back then I was like I want a professional job you know I want the kind of job that uh, you study work hard for and the rewards that come with that but also you know being the kind of person that lots of businesses and um individuals rely on t- to help them navigate um difficult times and to help them expand their businesses and those kind of things like I knew that that's what I wanted to do I wanted to be that integral part of of people's lives if that if that makes sense yeah um, and that's why I wanted to to be a lawyer and to um, go down that route and I knew I didn't want to be a barrister I knew I was definitely more suited to the transactional side of things um so it was li- really keeping that goal in mind um but also knowing your strengths and knowing like I'm seeing all these people around me and they're getting all these amazing opportunities but I know that you know they they don't do things well as some things as well as I do maybe they're stronger at other things as I am but I know that you know I know I know my work I know that I can do it in the end but it's just going to take perseverance and it's going to take you know somebody taking a chance on me and just showing that um you know I I was confident that would happen and I didn't know how long it would take but I I was hoping it wouldn't take too long but um (laughs) and you know I wanted to move to London as well and that in itself is difficult. I'm from Leicester originally. So, you yes. know, to just pack up all your stuff and decide you're going to a new city where you didn't know any, don't know anyone, have no connections, um, either like socially or, or in the legal world, is it's so, it's, it, you know, it's, it's so daunting, mm-hmm. but it's something that I really wanted to do. And I thought, I can't live in Leicester forever. So, yeah, I'm glad that I made the leap. <laughs> Trying to escape the Midlands. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you escaped it and I ran to it like I'm from London and I went to you and I was like okay I'm going to the Midlands for uni so off to Leicester I went so we literally did the reverse <laughs> but I, I I definitely understand that I feel like it's always it is easier for you to keep going once you know your why once you know why is it that I actually want to be a lawyer it's not because someone said it would be a good degree to go to do it isn't because you know it just looks good on tv it's because I know I have a passion for a particular area of law or I know I have a passion for a particular type of business or whatever the situation is and because of that I will keep going until I get there I think that was such a great point that you made so exactly. just wanted to and touch it's just that. It's just con- concentrate on your own path. And like, I think it's so Absolutely. good to be blinkered and just think like, these people are getting these amazing experiences. I'm so happy for them, but my time will come and I just need to do everything I can to make my CV as good as it can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like people only feel like, and, and even me, for a while I was thinking, oh, I'm wasting so much time. Like I finished university three years mm. ago and I still haven't got a training contract. I've just wasted three years. But I think eventually I realised it was never wasted time as long as I kept on learning. As long no, as I was okay. still developing skills, as long as I was still trying to figure out what it is a great commercial or great legal career look like to me. If you find out your answers to those questions, and if you keep kind of getting to a point where you understand the profession better, you understand what you want, then you're never wasting time, right? So yeah, absolutely exactly. agree. Exactly. I 100% <laughs> agree. I agree with all that. And like, you know, you can really tell those people that have paralegal and they've, you know, and I wasn't one of them. So yeah, I count myself out of this, but you know, any experience you've got as a paralegal and you, you know, you, you've got your professional acumen down to a T you're used to liaising with people, your email as a professional, they're strong. Um, you know, all those skills are so important. And, you know, a lot of people prefer to work with somebody that's got that experience and you can sort of hit the ground running and, you know, it's a lot easier than maybe, I found it at the beginning, um, but there's no experience, bad experience, and it all teaches you what you do and don't want to do. Absolutely. No, you said it perfectly. I'm not going to add anything. (laughs) Okay, great. So obviously you did get past that whole rejection and self-defeat stage, like not knowing what was going wrong. And then eventually you did get your TC with Maples. (laughs) How did that feel? And why did you decide to apply to that firm in the first place? It was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I like, I'll never forget the day. I was literally in a shoe shop in Leicester and I got a phone call and I was like, <laughs> I don't know, this is surreal, like, this is crazy. I can't believe that this moment, it's such an important moment in time, I'm literally, like, shopping for shoes. But Absolutely. anyway, it was, it was, um, it was, 
Yeah, yeah. Amazing. But the reason that I got the T six maples is um so I was doing my training contract and uh, I did my LPC, sorry, and I really enjoyed the commercial property module. And I just okay. had like a really inspirational tutor. She was brilliant. Like I, you know, I really enjoyed her, her lectures and, and the work that came along with it. So I decided to do the advanced commercial property module. Oh, um, I did I that. Like, did you study a BPP or Yeah, BPP. Okay, yeah, I did that module too. Okay. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love the subject matter, and I love the 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 the, the fact that you can have the historical, really intellectually stimulating bits of law alongside the you know practical application and it's it goes you know one and the same when if you're doing some kind of transactional work that's more just sort of solely contract based you're not going to get that exposure necessarily to um the sort of stimulating things and the, the historical deeds and all the things that you need to think about when you're doing any rights over land and all all those things which you do um in the commercial property space which is why I, I thought yeah that's definitely something I want to do I don't want to be bored I want to make sure that I get in that sort of um yeah that challenge in my work as well and so basically what I did then was look for firms that were really strong at commercial property so okay. firms that were known in the market and you know I, when I was applying for training contracts I say all these things like I know what the market was I didn't like I had no idea <laughs> I knew I knew the law firms that came to Exeter to do all the um you know presentations and, law wine and, stuff, and all yeah. the rest of it like I knew <laughs> one of those people I was like oh bro they gave me a goodie bag like I just applied it to that firm but um when I really looked into it, you know, I went into like chambers and partners and I found all the rankings for all the different firms. Mm -hmm. I looked at real estate and I'm thinking to myself, which one of these firms, A, haven't I applied to before? And B, uh, you know, looks like a good cultural fit for me, somewhere that I'd like to train. And having that focus was, was so important. And it means that my applications were tailored and they were really relevant. And I think that sometimes, I know it's difficult and not everybody can find something that they really enjoy, but sometimes that's where your um, applications sort of can let themselves down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I think in the first couple of years, you apply to all the firms that you you think you're supposed to apply to. So I applied to the mm. Slaughters of May and I yeah. applied to all these firms that like you hear about all the time. <laughs> and because of that, my C, my not CVs, my application forms were just not good enough because mm. I applied to it because I felt like I should, not because mm. I had any genuine connection to the firm or any particular interest in the firm. And I think once you do get that connection and that interest, whether it's because of the practice area or because you attended an event at the firm, you really like the people and the culture, whatever that connection is, once you have that connection, it really does push you to apply yourself wholeheartedly to the application process. So I think oh, that's definitely. important. Um, yeah. As you mentioned, like things like Chambers and Partners and Legal 500 are really good mm -hmm. at allowing you to see where firms rank in particular practice areas. So, no, that's definitely. And you can use Chambers Student as well to find your, you know, a real insight into what a day to day sort of day in the life of a trainee is as well, which is really important to think, you know, it, you know, am I going to be leaving the office at 10 p.m.? Is that going to be the reality or? Or is it more flexible than that? What are the opportunities mm -hmm. like? So it's all really important. But like you say, and like I say to you know other people that have asked me questions in the past, it, it's finding that that thing about the firm, whether it's somebody you met or a practice area you feel really strongly about. And once you have got your foot in the door, so to speak, then you can develop that. So if it's say you're applying to a big um, multi-service firm, but you're looking for that real estate element, and that's the thing that gets you in because you're so passionate, they have a really good practice area in that in that sector they're really well known etc and then through your training contract you can start branching out and thinking okay I'm going to do my next seat here my next seat here and e even if you start with an interest in real estate and end up qualifying into employment like at least it got you through the door you need something on your CV that's going to give you that edge and applying to these multi-service firms just saying I don't mind where I go it's just not it's not going to help you <laughs> yeah it's not it's not and it's like it's I feel like sometimes there's a thin line it's like you don't want to make it sound like in your application form like it's the only thing you want to do and yeah. you're not you, you you're sure from now that you want to qualify there and there's nothing else because they also want a trainee who's going to be flexible who's going to be mm. open to working in different departments because obviously in a training contract you're in at least four departments generally right so it's like they don't want someone who's completely cut off from other areas but they they do want someone who has a clear interest in particular mm. area that they are expert on and then as yeah. you said when you get there you branch out you explore as much as possible because mm. these things change and I think like I said that's the point of the legal practice series is that you may think you like an area of law or you th may think you like a sector and then you experience it or you hear about it firsthand and actually it's completely different to what you thought, right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. And obviously you mentioned obviously the rejections and then you got to Maples and some of the things that 
you think kind of made you stand out in your application form, you know, having that real estate focus. Is there any other tips that you have for aspiring sisters in terms of how to make them how to make themselves stand out in an application form? I would definitely say, like I said, have have a bit of focus and also pick the firms you're gonna to apply to. I think a lot of people take a real scatter kind of approach and it's just not it's not helpful. And I think if you the minute you start focusing and tailoring your applications, I think the interviews will come after that point. Yeah. And I think it's really doing your research as well and thinking about your CV, what is on there that shows I've I've really applied myself to this application, I've researched and I've looked into it. And so, for example, some of my, like I have a few different mentees and different schemes that I help with their applications and stuff. And, you know, if you're mentioning the fact that, you know, you really enjoy criminal law module, but then you're applying to, you know, your big your big firms, your magic circles. So it's like, and you're thinking, where is the disconnect here? You know, we're not looking for yeah. somebody who's going to enjoy that type of, of um, experience. And even if, you know, the only experience you've got on your CV is a local law clinic or, um, you know, some kind of mock trial where you did criminal law, even if that is your only experience, you you tailor that to say, these are the, these are the transferable skills I learned from that, but it wasn't mm -hmm. for me. And yeah. then you can see then that, you know, you have got that interest and you're making all your experience really relevant um and i think that's that's a key point is is relevance on your cv making sure everything's on there you can see clearly why you've put it on there why it's earned a place mm -hmm. um and i think just making sure yeah making sure everything's relevant and um ensuring that um you like play to your strengths as well and make sure you've got lots of different examples in there as as to things that you've done in the past or um trans like the transferable skills are just so important um but in terms of standing out i would just say try and get as much experience as you can and i know it's, it's so difficult but try and think of places where you might not necessarily um think of like and you've got your you've got your back schemes where you know they're very um sort of the application form is very structured but think about you know could you maybe drop an email to the local council or could you maybe is there a business you're particularly interested in do they have a in-house legal department is there someone there you know or you could just make a contact on linkedin or whatever it is you can do even if it's open days then or seminars webinars that they run it's all really good experience and something to talk about no absolutely i agree and i think when it comes to experience, you have websites like The Forage where you can get virtual legal work experience to kind of understand exactly. the different commercial law areas. You have Citizen Advice Bureau, you have um, mm -hmm. something else through the free representation unit. Yeah. And I think something you said, which was really important, is about making sure that everything in your CV or your cover list is relevant, but also being comfortable speaking about why you made the choices that you've made. Because... Mm -hmm along my legal journey I've explored everything like I started off with the whole criminal passion and I've got criminal work experience there and then I thought I wanted to be embarrassed and I've got too many pupages there and so when it gets to interview stage and they're like so why do you want to be a commercial solicitor if you did criminal barrister and I'm like well I did it I tried it this is what I enjoyed this is the skills I, I developed but this is why I don't want to do it and because I know I don't want to do it this is why I know that I do want to be a commercial solicitor so as long as you can exactly. speak through that I think it even shows them that you're able to make a well-informed decision as to mm -hmm. why you know that this is a career for you, as opposed to you just waking up one day thinking, yeah, this is this is for me. I think I want to do this. And then you start the training content and you're like, God, no. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I, I think there's it's, nothing wrong exploring as much experience as you can get. No, so it's, just true. it's just turning your experience into something positive. And there's always something positive Absolutely. you get out of it. Just the way that's, you present it, and and that's what it's what that's what the career is all about. It's the way you present things. You know, can you be persuasive? Is my writing style good enough? And that was another point that came to me whilst you were just talking. There is, you know, making sure the way you write your questions and on the application forms is structured. It reads mm -hmm. well. There's no mistakes in it, and it's easy to follow. Because I read some of them, and I'm thinking, what you know, I can't see the logic in how you put this paragraph together. It has to be straightforward because. The person that's reading it is reading 100 that day and they just want to skim through. Yep, yep, yep. That sounds all really interesting. If I'm looking at something and reading, what do they mean? I'm not sure. And do I have and, to go um, back to that? And yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And my other big top tip that I've just remembered is yeah. um, <laughs> do not put anything in your application form that you don't understand. Because I read, I read some of them and somebody's referenced something and they haven't quite put it in the right, correct, in the correct terms. And so you sort of, it takes you away from the point they're trying to make. So for example, okay. if you're looking at a law firm's website and you see a deal 
and it's and it's some kind of whatever the deal is and you don't really understand what that means but you but you put it into your example like I, I was really interested to see that you did x y and z but you word it in a way that is incorrect or that you know doesn't make sense so you, then, don't, you so, don't quite understand what the deal involves exactly yeah. and then they're, asked, they're they're just gonna say oh well she clearly doesn't understand what kind of work we do or whatever it is um so just make sure if you're picking if you're picking an example from the law firm website pick one that you can talk about and you know exactly what they're on about because it is very complex and some of these you know more commercial deals they're they're, they're really difficult if you haven't had sort of come into contact with that kind of um t- those kind of terms and that kind of thing before so yeah just keep your definitely. experience for things you can talk about definitely no you don't want to speak about a deal just because you feel like it was worth the, the most amount of money or it no. involved to stick particular oh client I think it's yeah. always better to speak about a deal where you have a genuine interest in that client or that sector or you can like you said you can speak about it in an interview like pick a, a retailer who's gone into administration like it's yeah. very everyday-ish you can be comfortable speaking to them about that and also demonstrating why you're interested in it because I remember exactly. with my training contract interview I mentioned um, like this G4S deal that came up, the securities company, and the interviewer, just who the person who decided to interview, who was given me as the interviewee, and um, he was like, "Oh, like let's speak about that deal." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And I was running off all these figures and information. He was like, mm, "Okay," so he knew that I knew about the deal. But then he asked, "Why did you even? Why were you even interested in that deal, though?" Mm. And I was like, "Oh, like my friend works for them, and I I wanted to work for them at one point because I wanted free admission to wireless." And he laughed. And he was like, <laughs> "Okay, like I can see why that company actually was interested. What you were actually interested that- in it? Like they want to know you didn't just pluck something for the sake of it." So yeah, I agree. exactly. That's like, yeah, that's exactly my point. And I and I was definitely tempted when I was doing my applications just to look at the first deal that comes up on the website and write that in. <sighs> Yeah. Like I'm really interested in this German tax restructuring that you did. Like, no, I'm not. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and it's true because with those ones that are really, like, easily accessible, it's obviously more common that a lot of people will use that same deal as well. So mm-hmm. if you've worded it in a way where, like, okay, you don't really understand it, and this candidate has worded it in a way where, okay, they clearly understand it, it's like, okay... You both mentioned the same deal, but one gets it, one mm. doesn't. So we'll get exactly. it, one doesn't. So and if yeah. if you've got if you pick sort of a simpler one as well, it doesn't mean that your explanation has to be simple. You can bring in trends in the market. You can bring in other companies that are similar, and you can say and impacted. You know, yeah. Exactly. What kind of strategies is that is that company is that company implementing at that particular time? So you can really show your commercial awareness if you pick a good example. Perfect. Okay, great. So application forms, I wanted to cover it in quite a lot of detail because obviously it's application season now and I know a lot of people are going through the process and and things like that. So I'm glad we touched on that. But with it being more about commercial real estate, can you speak to us about firstly your training contract structure? So what was that like? What seats did you do and what type of work did you do in each of those departments? So one of the main reasons I picked Maples was because I knew I wanted to do commercial real estate and I knew that my training contract would be solely focused on commercial real estate and all the associated departments. So as a firm, as a firm, we're just focused on commercial real estate. So we have construction, we have all the supporting sort of teams as well. So we can really give a full package of of any type of um, real estate transaction that you might want to do. You know, we've got all the support there, expert lawyers in each of the departments. So I knew that I'd get a really well-rounded experience at the firm. So we've got commercial real estate, which is the biggest department. And then we've got construction, um, property litigation, and we've got um, corporate. And I'm just, oh, I knew I'd forget because I had so many seats in my training. That's <laughs> litigation, corporate. Um, and then I did a comment as well on my training contract. So um, I managed to have a seat in every single department, which is really good. Um, and I managed to have this comment as well. So I did five seats actually on my training contract, which was um, unusual, but it meant okay. I had a really good experience of everything. Um, so in construction, um, I was working on so lots of different construction documents, such as the warranties um, and construction contracts. So sort of draft those and um, sitting on lots of meetings to um, sort of get the amends and all the different um commercial points that went along with that and then um we did some refinancing work as well so um that would involve getting all the construction documents that already exist and sort of making bank the bank the party to those or sort of disclosing to the other side to so people can do their sort of due diligence on all the construction documents that element uh, all the construction documents and then if there were any like transactions so say 
um, one of our clients was selling a property, then we'd get all the construction documents ready so that the um, so that the seller so that the buyer can review those. Or if as alternatively, if if we were buying somewhere, then we'd look at all the construction documents and pick out any um, problems that were there. So okay. I really enjoy construction. It's a brilliant department. I think it was definitely contender for me to. Um, to me to qualify into I, I thought it was brilliant really enjoyed the work even though I did it in the height of the pandemic oh, um of course. <laughs> my, my first department was um, really commercial real estate so okay. commercial property um as I said that's the largest department at Maple so it's got the biggest variety in there so it's one team um but there's lots of kind of sub teams within it um okay. so we've got like strategic land so that's sort of acquiring development sites um, for developer clients. Um, then we've got like asset management. So all of our clients which own sort of big multi-tenanted buildings, so shopping centers or um, office blocks and that kind of thing. So you work on their assets for them. So anytime they need to um, have a new lease or vary a lease or um, all those day-to-day -day things that happen with property that's the kind of things that we do within like in the asset management capacity yeah. um and then we've also got within that as well sales and um purchases so anytime a contract um a client wants to purchase a site or um dispose of one we're there to help with all of that and the good thing about maples is you work across that so you do have a get a variety of experience from all those different sub teams within the main okay. team if that makes sense so okay. i had a really varied training contract and managed to get involved with every single document really every single kind of type of document that you would do in a in a commercial property team in our yeah. in a kind of city firm which is really good um, and then in litigation as well so we okay. deal with all different types of property disputes and um, litigation I found really was like the LPC like I drafted every single document that we did in the LPC so I did a claim form a defense <laughs> notice right. um, I was getting right in there you know with your rent arrears and obviously it was COVID time so loads of rent arrears to settle and to sort of litigate on um that was really interesting a really interesting time to do it but I only did a three month seat there and then I did my other half of my three months I did it in the corporate seat so that was a corporate sales so um we sort of work with companies that have a lot of real estate buying other companies um or selling other companies that have the whole lot of real estate so that's where our sort of niche is there um and then I went on to comment in my final um six months and then I then I stayed for an extra three months um, and that was brilliant. Like, I really enjoyed being on the other side of it. I really enjoyed, mm -hmm. um, like, emailing partners in other law firms and being like, when will this be ready? That was yeah. I really enjoyed. <laughs> I was like, this Literally. year is firmly on the other foot and I was ready for it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I really I enjoyed imagine. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was brilliant. And being part of a business and feeling like you're helping that business was, I mean, obviously your law firm is a business in itself, but sort of seeing a strategy and knowing what that business wants to do and helping them to achieve that was really satisfying and I thought it was a really good experience so if anyone has the opportunity to do a comment in their training contract um or if it's just something even if it's something like in an interview that you talk about that you'd want to do it looks really good to know that um you know that's a possibility and uh it's brilliant experience it's, it really helps to keep your sort of experience as broad as possible which is really important when you're a uh, trainee absolutely and I, I definitely agree I think working in-house and working in private practice it really does allow you to see things from both sides it's like mm. okay as a lawyer we're giving advice as a, the receiver or when you then go in-house it's like okay this is what they do with the advice this is how they need the advice this is how the exactly. advice translates into the day-to-day -day, like workings of that business so I think yeah I would I completely agree I think getting both experiences is good and obviously it also allows you to understand whether okay do I want to do private practice for the next 40 years or do I think that actually working in-house is something that I may want to do full-time later on down the line so yeah great exactly. experience and I think everyone forgets well you definitely when you're sort of focused on that training contract like that is in-house training opportunities yeah. and if that's something you know that is really somewhere to look as well if it's something that you think you could see yourself doing that like do you want to be the business's go-to go-to person for for lots of different legal questions and if that is the kind of thing that you you would enjoy and you'd, you'd enjoy engaging in the in the wider business like that then it's definitely opportunity to look out for there's some great opportunities that I see coming up regularly so I definitely wouldn't discount training in-house yeah absolutely <laughs> and like whether when we're talking about in-house it could be that the in-house company offers training contracts 
or it could be that you're working in-house and because yeah. they like you and they like the type of work that you do they may even offer um to help you qualify through Silex. Mm-hmm. I know that was something that was offered to me when I was working in-house at a property management company but I was doing residential real estate they were like okay we want you to stay do Silex, and I was like Right now, I want to still keep trying to do like the whole training contract route thing, but it was always at the back of my mind that look, it is an option and it's always good to know what your options are. So, yeah, you know, that's exactly. definitely important. I think real estate gets the um gets the understanding, the overview that generally as a trainee or even as a paralegal, you get a lot of responsibility. Was that your experience as well? Or has that been your experience? Yeah, definitely. Um it's at Maples you sort of have the opportunity to sit with a partner so you're not with an associate or senior associate you know you've got that direct partner contact which means that you are doing a lot of work for them and having that responsibility of you know you're sat with them so like they're like you know email this person or send this to this person so yeah. you're having that direct client contact which you might not get in a larger firm um but yeah definitely felt like I had a lot of responsibility and it can be quite daunting at times um but I, I, I really enjoyed it and I think it it you don't realize it at the time but you know you are growing through these things so every time you find something really difficult you, you you think oh I don't know how I'm going to manage this but the next time you come to it it isn't as difficult and it really shows that you're you know you're moving on and and I think that's why when I got to my NQ job and I thought you know this is going to be this is going to you know ramp up a lot now there's a lot of there's a lot of responsibility on you and, and there is but you're trained for it and you're ready for it so after those two years you're in a place where you feel like I definitely was in a place where I didn't realise how far I'd come. And then I'm like, no, I, I can deal with this. I can do this, yes. I, I can do this, this is okay. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the responsibility was at the right level. And then you're ready to take it up a notch, which is which is really good. Um, and I think real estate lends itself to, nicely to some math, smaller matters that you can do sort of by yourself as a trainee. So yeah. we do lots of things like way leaves. So that's sort of like working with energy companies to to lay like in, in internet cables and those giving them those kind of rights over land um or like licenses like car park licenses those types of things um or simple leases so things that you could get on with as a trainee so you've got the heads of terms and it's something that you can populate and you can sort of make sure you've got all of the things that the client needs in there and that's mm-hmm. the kind of work that you can deal with yourself you know obviously you've got your supervisor to help you and to check everything but those matters um are really useful for trainees because it's such good exposure you know you're dealing directly with the with the council on the other side with the solicitor on the other side um and you can manage that yourself and it's manageable um Mm -hmm. and you get that client contact so there's a lot of those kind of deals and matters that we help with as trainees that were really helped you to build your confidence nice so obviously because you applied to maples based on the fact that you knew you wanted to go into commercial real estate and knowing that the focus of the training contract was all going to be around commercial real estate why is it that you decided to qualify particularly into the commercial real estate uh, department as opposed to maybe construction or the property litigation the other seats that you said you also really enjoyed um i really enjoyed the variety of work i think okay. with construction um you might find yourself especially as a junior member of the team doing the same thing doing the same kind of things over and over again and I think maybe it was a bit repetitive and I thought um, I'm sure maybe that's not the case maybe that's my impression <laughs> of it and it's completely yeah, yeah, yeah. different um but that's how I felt and I think with the, with the commercial real estate um department it's yeah a lot more varied um and I think I really enjoyed working with certain clients as well so my comment was with a client um, and I knew if I qualified into the commercial property department, then I'd be that client contact, which, well, you know, be on the team that deals with that client, yeah. um, which I nice. really enjoyed, you know, because a lot of the time your focus needs to be on building those relationships with clients. And it's so important to view your law firm as a business and to make sure that you're getting involved with that business development and sort of going out there, making those relationships with clients and also finding new clients at the same time. So. Um, I felt that that was all kind of the kind of things that I could do and help with in the in that department in particular um, and we do a lot of really good deals in that department and a lot of really good work um, and things that appear in so property week and all the different property press that that's around and um and not as though the other departments don't they no do of course, do, of course. But, uh, <laughs> I was just more interested in that in that in that respect but I also like working uh, working in uh, commercial property because I'm just super nosy like I want to know what shops are coming to the new shopping centre like I want to know 
um, who uh, who owns that building or who's going into that building in the city. I just find it so interesting. The built environment for me has always been something that I'm yes, so interested in. And, you know, it, if you had the right sort of, I went to a state school and we didn't have any like career advice. It was pretty terrible. So if I'd have had that advice, you know, maybe I'd have picked a different degree. Maybe I'd have gone down more of the surveying route, like pure okay. real estate degree. Um, and do that kind of side of it. But I didn't even know that was a career I had no idea. So um, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy to be where I am. But um, yeah, in building things and that side of it, um, I find really interesting as well. And I really find sort of finding properties to acquire and, and assessing the merits of them is, yeah, I find that really interesting too. And seeing that from the client yeah. side is, is, yeah, it's a good experience. No, definitely. I agree. I think what I also loved about real estate and like residential property was, like you said, being able to see the buildings that you're working yeah. on. It's like, oh, I just closed your your um, <laughs> lease on that deal and all that type of stuff. It's like nice to see, OK, like that was something I actively worked on. Exactly. I think the practical side of real estate is nice. Um, yeah. And obviously, I love the fact that you started to touch on the type of skills and stuff that you that you had to de demonstrate during your role you know you mentioned the building relationships what other skills would you say is quite important when it comes to working in commercial real estate i would say um it's really important to um it's, it's all the skills that you sort of write in your cv that you tell everyone that you've got but they are actually really <laughs> important so like attention to detail you're dealing with lots of external bodies so you're dealing with hmrc to file those tax returns, the stamp duty yeah. and tax returns. You're dealing with the land registry, um, which can be difficult. So you've got to really have your eye on the ball. You've got to make sure that every form you're submitting is completely correct. So attention to detail, super important. Also, I'd say um, as a sort of, not necessarily commercial real estate, but during your training contract generally, is just being as helpful as you can. And I think that sounds really stupid, but... Um, just you know you are there to help and to learn and to observe and to just be there for any kind of support that the business needs and nice. I think some people might have an attitude where they're like oh I shouldn't be doing that like that's that should be like a secretary's job or that should be a paralegal job or whatever like, that attitude is going to get you nowhere like everybody no. needs to roll their <laughs> sleeves up <laughs> and no, absolutely. you're not going to get a good name for yourself like you need to muck in with everybody else and I think that's super important just keep yourself you know available to everybody and willing to do things that are maybe you know a bit boring or you don't really fancy doing it but you know putting yourself out there and putting your hand up for all those opportunities just goes such a long way no it's so true and I think um as you said even though people generally have their roles in teams it's always important to be able to show that you are a team player by getting involved in every, anything and everything that has to be done whether that SDLT form needs to go out quickly you need to be able to do it like not that okay exactly. I gave it to the secretary I can forget about it it's like no if you don't meet that deadline there's financial consequences there's legal consequences no, exactly. it's like it has to be done I think with real estate it's very transactional everything mm. has a timeline it has a deadline there are checklists and you have to make sure that everything on that checklist is dealt with before you sign off on that client or before you submit that form so yeah I completely agree <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And an organisation as well. Like you just reminded me that as well. Every time I had an appraisal, you know, it was always like really a great uh, organisation skills. I was thinking, what was I doing and differently than anybody else would? But it's like always knowing where stuff is. You know, if a client, if a partner says, Emily, where's that? You've got it. You know where it is. You know, you don't have to sit scrolling for your emails to find things. They're there. You've got a really good system in place. And being organised is half the job of a trainee. And like when you're yeah. in litigation and those kind of seats it's diarising those deadlines those court deadlines when does this need to be filed by when does this when does this response need to be in for this defense or whatever it is that you're doing it's just yeah having making sure you're super organized is yeah goes such a long way good <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we kind of covered that i think my next question would be and, and a question that actually came up twice when i submitted you know answered one to send their questions in was um how can people or aspiring solicitors keep up to date with property news because obviously we touched on earlier the fact that you know you want to demonstrate your commercial awareness your knowledge and your research and stuff in your application forms and throughout the application process how can they keep up to date with what's going on in the property market um, so there's a few accounts that you can follow on like LinkedIn or on Instagram. And the ones I read every day are Property Week, 
um, a States Gazette. And then we also have uh, React News. I don't know whether that's just specifically for real estate, but that's what we use it for at work. Now, you, the problem you'll have here is that you'll go onto them and you'll need a subscription to read the articles. Um, so you might just see a headline thing that looks really interesting and not be able to read it. But what I suggest you do is Google the headline and you'll find that the contributors to some of these um, to some of these publications are actually like law firms. So they will okay. have published that article on their own website as well as then publishing it in Property Week. So if it's a particular deal or whatever, that will be definitely be um, or a, or an opinion piece that will definitely be on the law firm website or whichever professionals written it. It usually a comes up on their website as well so you will be able to find that article it might just not not be through that stream that actual that website that you originally exactly on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah on the news website um but also if you type in um like just sort of the normal newspapers usually they have a property section as well sort of within the business section they sometimes have a property section there as well um so you can look there and then just type in like commercial property news and if and you can just find some articles on um, just generally on Google as well. But if there's a particular sector that you find interesting, so say it's like logistics or, or um, like hotels or whatever it is within sort of the real estate industry that you find interesting, they've all got their own publications as well. So if you want to keep up to date with those kind of deals, then you can sort of type that in, find publications that, that are sort of focusing on that, and then you can have a look at there as well. So there's lots of um, there's lots of different places to look. Um, and once you find when you keep sort of having a look and finding trends, it's easier then to find more news around that area, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. And I never even thought about, you know, getting the headline, putting it to Google and trying to find another <laughs> article. That is so smart because some of these publications are really expensive. Like yeah. if you don't go to them through like a student portal or if you don't have access to them as a result of like your workplace login, yeah. then they can be expensive. So yeah, that I think that's a really, really interesting point. Um, I think to round it off then, with what tips would you give to aspiring to either still apply for training contracts, you know, going through that process or are interested in real estate in particular? I would say, first of all, just keep going. Like it's such a process. And if you get lucky the first time, like you'll 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 just yeah, that's brilliant, but it's not that doesn't happen for everyone. So just keep it going doesn't. and yeah, find an area that interests you and say just focus your applications on that. Even though it might it might be something that you you know don't necessarily want to do forever, it will get you to the foot in the door and it will get you to the firms that you want to be in, and you can sort of have that broader experience once you get in there. Um, reach out to people as well. So if there's yes. any sort of mentoring schemes, like I mentor some students from my old university. Um, I also um, mentor through schemes I found on LinkedIn as well. So just reach out okay. there and just get get your name on down, get a mentor. Any everybody can teach you something. Literally everybody can Absolutely. teach you something. Everyone, so, that's so true. Yeah, I find somebody like I I have a mentor now um, through one of the through one of the schemes that I found that on LinkedIn, and he's great, and he just you know looks at things and problems and things in a completely different way that I do so find somebody to help you and the, the schemes are out there there's a really good one called grow mentoring um, yes I'm sure yes. you've seen that one it's yeah I've got I've got um, two mentees by a grow mentoring yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that like it's such a good thing to do um so sign up to grow mentoring they're always taking on new mentors I don't know whether they have like a period we have to sign up or not but that's a good one to yeah, get involved with do. um and through that you can build connections you know I've put people in touch with people I was at law school with and people I was at university with so it really goes a long way um and just as I said you know post on LinkedIn if there's a particular area or the, the articles that you find interesting put them on LinkedIn and you know even if nobody reads them there might be that one recruiter that looks or that you one sort it, of yeah. HR person and they see it and they see your posting about even if it's not necessarily about particular deals or things that you found on on the internet it could be about like um, like gender equality in law firms or those kind of articles or AI or any like technology in law firms that, that sort of we're seeing more and more of those kind of things just to let people know that you're commercially aware your your ears to the ground in the legal the legal sector um just yeah so important and that might be the difference between you and another candidate yeah. so it's just finding those little wins that you can that you can do and that sort of make you stand out so I think yeah, I think those are my top tips. Research, research, research. Make sure your applications are accurate, appropriate and relevant um, and reach out to people. 
absolutely. Just on that reach out to people thing, it is so important. Like you said, that you can learn something from everyone that you come across, whether they're at your stage, whether they're partner level, associate level, future mm-hmm. trainees, you can learn something from everyone or people who've just been in the legal profession generally. You can learn things from barristers, literally. And yeah, I probably. know sometimes it can be hard to get onto these mentoring schemes because maybe they might mm-hmm. have a certain amount of places or things like that. But I, I said to someone recently, don't get so stuck on having a mentor and focus more on having lots of people that you learn from because then yeah. it kind of takes the pressure off. You're not worried that, oh, you sent that application or you are, you sent that question to your mentor and they haven't got back to you yet. Send it to three other people on LinkedIn and you're, someone will answer you. Like, <laughs> I think LinkedIn is such a great platform and I definitely, definitely don't use it enough. But I feel like yeah. if I did use it more, as you said, it only takes one person to see your post or one person to see your question and answer your question for you to get the answers that you need. So exactly, yeah, network. Exactly. You, so you never know who's watching you because you I'm, never know. <laughs> I'm I'm always sharing uh, links. I'm always sharing like real estate news and different deals and stuff that our clients have done or that I've seen that I find interesting. You never know who's watching you. And then one day, a partner said to me, he was like, "Emily, you're so good at LinkedIn." He's like, "I want oh. I want you to." I want you to tell everybody, like, I want you to do a little, like, LinkedIn um, thing at work. Nice. This is so embarrassing because everybody knows how to use LinkedIn. I'm just telling everybody how to post, post like, post. It's not interesting. But, um, yeah, so those little things go a long way. And I think I one, thing, one, one other thing I was going to say to sort of, in terms of converting, like, a VAC scheme to a training contract or, or converting a training contract to an NQ job, whatever it is, is like don't underestimate the power of doing little things like to join the sports committee join the yeah. pro bono initiatives and you might think oh, this is going to take my time and I'm not going to get out anything out of it but it goes such a long way because the people make the culture of a firm and if you want your firm Absolutely. to be a certain way you need to be the, in the driving seat like you need to make sure that you're you know promoting these opportunities and putting something in place if your firm doesn't have a certain committee that you'd want it to have start one like there's you are there as part of the business and you can change the business improve the business like it's whatever you want it to be you can sort of go a long way to making it happen no I can I agree and I think I did a whole video about converting your vacation team as a training contract because like I said there's so many little things that go into them assessing you as a person if you know, as you say, the people make up the firm. It's like, they look mm-hmm. at you and be like, will you fit in here? Not to say yeah. that there's a type, but it's like, do you embrace all parts of the business or are you mm-hmm. here to do the work we set and go home? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, what extra effort are you putting in? Are you networking? Are you <laughs> not going out for drinks necessarily? Because, you yeah. know, you don't have to drink. I don't drink. But like, are you, I like, for example, I joined the Christian Society when I was part of my exactly. vacation because that's, yeah. that's something that's important to me and something I would do yeah. as part of the firm. It's like, I've shown them, look, this is my firm already, so yeah. I've made myself comfortable. I've moved thing. in. I've moved in here. I've got <laughs> Literally, I've I've made yeah. my place. So um, no, that's definitely important, exactly. and, and definitely things that you should look into once you get to that stage. But um, yeah, no, I definitely. agree. <laughs> and thanks so much for covering um all of that. I do have we do have one question that's come in that I think is really good for us to touch on. Um, so thank you so much, for everyone who's still in the live. If you have any <laughs> questions, please send them in now because we're getting towards the end of the live um the question essentially just asks whether you should decide on the area of law that you want to do before applying to law firms because I know we mentioned earlier about like having a focus the question is should we pick the area of law we're going to do before we apply no I don't think you need to necessarily make that decision 100% I think it's just choosing something that you're interested in and sort of making yourself a tiny bit more expert in that area so yeah. that you can talk about it in an interview. And then from there, you're, you know, you can choose whatever you want to do once you get into law firm. But it's just having that little bit of interest, seeing that person, oh yeah, this person does have an interest in, in yeah. whatever it's property. And our firm is really good at that. So I can see where the link is. I can see why they've applied. But for some, sometimes when you apply to one of these big multi-service firms, the the, in, the interview or the person reading your CV can't really see why. Yeah, okay, you're interested yeah. in you know you've read about you've read about our firm but what is it that actually makes you interested in it is it you mm-hmm. know you need a little bit extra to show them I'm really interested in specifically your particular firm yeah. um and I think you know gone are the times where you can just copy and paste your application questions like no 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 you can't yeah, do that we're so, not doing that <laughs> we're not doing that um there's no point to it so um yeah I, I don't think you definitely need to be yeah 100% sold on it you just need to have an interest and say I think it's something I'd like to do I know you're really good at it that's why I want to train here to get the 
the best of experience I can in that particular area. Agreed, agreed. I think, as I kind of mentioned during the live, I've my interest has ranged from criminal to family to employment. Then I was in real estate. Now I'm thinking more corporate M&A. And there's mm. absolutely nothing wrong with that, as long as you know why you like when you like it. And I think yeah, it, goes, exactly. it goes back to the why commercial law. If mm. you know why commercial law, you will know what interests you. If it's because you like um, reading about all of the M&A deals that you'll see in the news, that's your why. If it's mm. because you like to read about what's going on in the retail sector and how businesses work, that's your why. Once you know what your why is, you need to find firms that match your why. So if it's exactly. your interest in M&A, then look at firms that do a lot of M&A work. If it's the yeah. fact that you love the retail sector and how businesses work in that space, what law firms focus particularly on retail what law mm. firms have a lot of retailers as their clients and once you know your why and you pick firms that match your why demonstrating your passion for them is how is what you need to do in the application form so it's like yeah, exactly. cause and effect. <laughs> yeah yeah we've got the magic formula nailed <laughs> literally literally that is that's the way you need to approach research it's like make a list of what it is you want in your legal career what did you think you want make it a list of what your interests are and then get firms that match that don't do it the other way around because then it's like mm. you're having to force yourself to like a firm that you don't organically like and mm -hmm. you don't want your application to feel forced because if it feels forced it feels copy and pasted <laughs> yeah so, exactly exactly that is Couldn't that. Put it better. <laughs> thank you i think that is all the questions we have for today um so thank you so much emily for taking your time to speak to us sharing your experience and giving us some insight into commercial real estate you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And if you want to contact me, then it's best to do it on LinkedIn. So um, just, I don't know if my name's on the, on the ad yeah, or not. Yes, um, yes, it's on the yeah. poster. Yeah, or, yeah, add me on LinkedIn. You can ask me any questions. I'm always happy to help. Perfect. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Emily. Have a good evening, everyone. Amazing. Have a good evening. Thank Thanks, you. Bye, Emily. Bye. Bye. <laughs>